Good evening, it's uh, great to be with you. First, uh, grieving parents want a change in the law to force universities to take better care of their students after around 100 suicides a year. At Bristol's two universities, there have been at least 15 in the last five. Well, today there was a petition in Downing Street calling for unis to have a duty of care towards those they're trying to educate. Our home and social affairs correspondent Fiona Lambden reports. Fighting for Natasha, for Daniel and all the students who've taken their lives. Today their parents came to London, to Downing Street, with their demand. At the moment, universities have a general duty of care to the students, which means that they have to take measures not to cause them harm. But these parents think that doesn't go far enough. They want to see new legislation, which would mean that universities have a stronger statutory legal duty of care, which is already in places like schools, prisons, custody suites and hospitals. It's a really emotional moment, really, just to reflect on Daniel, Daniel's life. In 2018, Lee Fryatt's son Daniel joined Bath Spa. Before starting, 19-year-old Daniel told the university he suffered from anxiety and depression. It was his first week at university um, and completely out of the blue and unbeknown to us, uh, his relationship with his long-term girlfriend um, ended. Uh, and that was you know, that was the trigger. At that time, the only person available was a peer support worker who actually we found out in the inquest was just a volunteer postgraduate student. She had no training in mental health and um, unfortunately she was the last person to see my son alive. If there'd been a statutory duty of care in place, how do you think it would have helped Daniel? I would like to have seen that that meant uh, actually it was trained professional staff uh, that were going to students in potential crisis, not volunteers. Bath Spa told us they want all members of their community to feel confident to know what to say and do to help prevent suicide. Hello. Um, you're pretty cool. So, you know, like Daniel, 20-year-old Natasha Abrahart was also um, studying in 2018, but in Bristol. On the day she killed herself, she was due to take part in a group presentation in a large lecture theatre. Um, I'm 23 now, okay. so I've outlived Natasha, which okay. is not a nice thought I like to, to sit on. Her family took legal action over Bristol University's failure to make adjustments for her social anxiety disorder. They won part of their case, but the judge was not satisfied. The university actually owed Natasha a duty of care. They have a level of care in the same way I have a level of care not to punch someone in the street. Um, but the moment you, but to go beyond that, to not inflict things from not passing on a doctor's note, from not passing on a thing, to calling up a department if they think you're unwell or un distressed, none of that is required. It is up to the universities individually whether they want to do that. And even then, are they, do they follow their own rules? There is no one to enforce to make sure, check that they're actually doing what they say they want to do. Universities say this is unworkable because students are adults, they're over 18. We're not looking for monitoring, we're looking for parity. Bristol University say every single member of staff cares deeply about the welfare of their students. In the case of Natasha, staff worked incredibly hard to support her and it was due to their efforts she was receiving specialist mental health support from the NHS. But this evening, these parents are demanding a discussion, a debate, saying they'll fight on until they see real change. Fiona Lambdin, BBC Points West, Westminster. And joining me now is the Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West of England, that's Steve West, who chairs the National Advisory Group for Mental Health in Higher Education. Well, good evening. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. This is heartbreaking to hear these stories, isn't it? Why can't universities have the same duty of care towards their students, which apply at, at the moment in schools? So we have a general duty of care, uh, recognising the context within which we are supporting our students. So these are students 18 to 80 in my university, so it's very diverse. And we have an ability to support our students, but it has to be in that context. Whereas in schools, 
There, are, there is a clearly a duty of care in a school. There are also safeguarding arrangements in schools which don't apply in universities in the same way. So I think what we're saying is it's just not workable in the same context. Well, but the university will have a duty of care to you as a vice chancellor. Is the duty of care to you greater than to the students? So the duty of care to members of staff is different to students. But it's in greater, that, isn't it? It's slightly greater, yes, in the same way in all workplaces. The duty of care within the university for our students is of course to ensure that we create safe environments within which students can study uh, and work. So we have an, a, a need to make sure that we're following health and safety and equality duties and all of those legislative frameworks that exist. Adding to that through a statutory duty of care, which is a very clearly legally, legally defined uh, determinant, is quite frankly at the moment too difficult to deliver in a university setting. Well it might be too difficult but at the moment about 100 students a year are dying from suicide. That's almost two a week. It's not working. The system just doesn't work as it is at the moment. Well the, the context within which that's happening and I agree with you, one suicide is one too many and universities clearly across the country are working very hard to reduce the number of deaths through suicide that can be avoided. But the Office for National Statistics suggests that in universities it's three for every 100,000 students and if you match that in the community it's nearer 12 in communities. But so universities are doing a good job in supporting students, we can do better. But they're in your care aren't they and sometimes these, they're, well they're kids really, they're just 18 in some cases and you just say oh you're adults, you look after yourselves, that's not good enough is it? No I don't think we do say that, I think we say to students who are transitioning into universities of course you have needs. First of all work with us, identify what you need in terms of your learning and also in, in terms of your support. Make sure we understand, as you are entering universities, exactly what we need to do. And then we'll work with you and support you. Unfortunately, in many of these cases, the students are not identified as having any issues and are not flagged in our systems as needing additional support. Half of those who take their own lives are not known to the NHS, are not known to the university, but and are not known to their parents. Say they're not turning up at lectures, for example. Well, it, presumably then there's a process to track that student down and make sure that student or their parents knows about it. So the emphasis is on the student, uh, and we have mechanisms whereby, yes, we will look at students' attendance, we'll look at how they're engaging, it's about engagement. Some students will engage through different mechanisms, so we'll have tracking ability. And where we have serious concerns, and this is critical, David, where we have serious concerns, we have the ability to contact a supporter of that student. Now, in many cases, that's the parents, but it's not necessarily always the parents. Uh, we're out of time, I'm afraid, but uh, it's a difficult subject, and I appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much.